Inside my niece Bianca's old room, I found two Ziplocs stuffed with rolls and rolls of hair. Dead as a doornail, black as a tunnel hair, thin as strands of tumbling seaweed. Maybe it was my sister who stashed away Bianca's locks so that no one could see, trying to save that rootless hair, that hair without a home. There had been a war raging inside Bianca's six-year-old bones. White cells had staked their flag. They saw it as their destiny. They conquered the territory of her body. They said it was manifested. It all fell out. I felt bald and blank as Bianca's skull when they closed her casket, hymns wafting into the night sky. Bianca loved to eat fish. She ate it fried, ate it raw, ate it whole. She ate it with its head, slurping on the eyeball jelly, leaving only tiny, neat bones. The marrow should have worked. They said she had six months to live. That's what the doctors told those fishermen over 50 years ago when they were out at sea just miles away from Bikini. The day the sun exploded, rain split open and rained ash on the fishermen's hair and clothes. On that day, those fishermen were quiet. They were neat. They dusted the ash from their hair, reeled in their fish, and turned around their boat to speed home. There is an old Chamorro legend that the women of Guahan once saved their island from a giant coral-eating fish. They hacked off their longer-than-night-sky hair, wove their locks into a magical net, and then they caught the monster fish, and they saved their islands. Thin, rootless, fishbone hair, black night sky. Catch this ash, catch moon, catch star. For you, Bianca, for you, 